Is the GPU market about to break in the favor of gamers, finally? Signs are pointing to yes. We're gonna go over what those signs are, what needs to happen to get from here to you being able to buy a graphics card at a reasonable price, and when that might happen, coming up right now. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I'm super excited for this one. Each of these monthly updates for the past, I don't know how many months, I've come at you with doom and gloom. I've told you that no, it's not going to get better. No, it's going to actually get worse and it's going to keep getting worse and you should buy something right now because the prices are going to keep skyrocketing. Well, finally, I get to come tell you, I'm finally, here we are in, I'm filming this in June right now, almost the middle of June. The prices, I think, are going to get a lot better. All the leading indicators are showing that. Now, these are leading indicators. That doesn't mean the prices have gotten better yet. That means that all the indicators, the things that need to fall into place for prices to get better are falling into place. We're going to go over all of that. Why are these things happening now? Hint, cryptocurrency is in a big state of transition and it's cycling out. We'll go through all of that. And I want to go through what are the graphics cards that you should be focused on that are coming up in the market. When can we expect to see MSRPs or at least reasonable prices again? And what do you need to do right now to get a graphics card if you need one right now? Of course, that's what this channel is all about. It's about getting you the best price to performance in your PC build. I can't wait to say that more often, PC build. If that's the kind of content that you want more of, then remember to subscribe, like the video, and of course, click that bell icon so you get notified when we go live. We are up over 30,000 subscribers. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody on that one. And we're almost at 33,000 as I'm filming this. I can't even believe we're growing so fast. So please join us. And with that, let's jump into this one. It's going to be a good one. Let's start off by talking about the 3080 Ti and the 3070 Ti launch. Now listen, the cards have been panned. I'm not going to get in the performance of the cards other than to say total waste of money and yes, you know, 80, 70% more cost or 10% per, more performance isn't a good deal in anybody's book unless your name begins with an L and maybe ends with an S. But that's another whole thing. Everyone's got, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But look at the folks who lined up for this card. This shows you the level of desperation going on right now because we're nine, almost 10, 11 months since the launch of NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series and there is no stock in sight. People lined up in New York City on the street, 200 deep for 62 graphics cards. Do the math, you probably didn't get one even if you did line up. But why are people lining up for this card and why is NVIDIA launching this now? A lot of the takes online, they were roughly correct, but they missed one key element. And that is, this is not going to increase availability. It's not about competing with AMD. This is simply a business move by NVIDIA to sell the the silicon for a higher price, to sell its product for a higher price than it's already getting. Why is it? Really quickly. Well, all of these chips, all the 3080 chips begin life as an RTX 3090. It's called the GA102 die. You can see it right here. The chips that don't quite pass spec for 3090s, you can't sell them as 3090s. So what do you do? Well, they go through a process called binning. I've gone through this in other videos. I'll just briefly touch on it here, where they cut down some of the cores that aren't working, and then they sell it as something else. In this case, they sell it as the RTX 3080. Now, in normal markets, they usually can't sell enough of the high-end cards, so they'll also cut down some perfectly good chips to also make 3080s. And if that were the case, there would be plenty of 3080s to go around. But the reason that card is you can't find it anywhere is because they can sell every 3090 that they can produce. So that's kind of left them with this decision. So on the one hand, they're selling the 3090s at an MSRP of $1,500. We know the cards are actually going for quite a bit more. And they're selling the 3080s at an MSRP of you know $700, right? $699, technically. So how do they go, how do they basically increase the price of the 3080 without actually doing anything? Well, they introduced the 3080 Ti and these are simply pieces of silicon. This is probably in their yields where a lot of their uh, chips are hitting that can't be 3090s, but they could bring the performance up a little bit and they can charge you more money for this. And they're charging almost double the price. 
for not a lot more performance. So that's all this move is about. And frankly, I don't even really think it's really aimed at the 3080 Ti as much as it's aimed at the 3070 Ti because the 3070 Ti is not a cut down card. The 3070 uses the GA104 die. It's a different die. So what they're actually doing is up tuning very slightly a 3070 and then they're gonna charge you 100 bucks more MSRP, remember? And that gives the board partners the clearance that they need to come out and charge even more than that MSRP to really jack those prices up. And it's all in an effort to basically grab back some of the profits that the scalpers are making. So the equation remains the same. The prices are gonna be about the same for these cards given the performance is almost identical, but they're clawing back some of the profit from the scalpers to them this has nothing to do with gamers whatsoever. I'm not a big fan of the move, but it is what it is. Okay, enough of the bad news. Let's get into the good news now. Why is the market about to turn? Well, anytime you're tracking a, a particular commodity, in this case, it's graphics cards, there are leading indicators and there's lagging in indicators for price. The leading indicators are the things that have to happen, the market conditions that have to exist in order for prices to go down. And those are the ones we're looking at right now because those leading indicators are the ones that are showing us that the graphics card market is poised to make a big comeback in the favor of gamers. As long as it continues in this direction, I'm always gonna put that asterisk out there, especially this year. So let's take a look at where prices are and prices are actually coming down right now. So if we look at the GPU pricing index on Tom's Hardware, they've been tracking the secondary market. That's cards being resold on eBay and other places. If we look at the price of a 3060, an RTX 3060, from their last update, which they did as of this video 28 days ago, so we're looking at last month's prices, the average price was $909 for an RTX 3060. Now let's jump over to eBay RTX 3060 and let's look about what we can get a card for right now. And we're gonna go here, we're just gonna go buy it now uh, and we're gonna go basically the low. Now typically some of the super low end ones are either something like this, they're, the, uh, they're an HP, they're you know kind of a crappy OEM single fan card that somebody pulled out of a pre-built. A, a pre or they're basically a scam card for somebody who doesn't really exist. So typically I scroll down quite a bit before we get there. But what are we seeing here? Look at the prices. These are not $909, this is $850, $829. Yes, some people throw extra shipping in there so the price looks lower. But generally, these are not $900 prices. So we can see that the price seems to have come down at least $50 to $60. Now look, you can still say, well, Jason, hey, that. The 3060 is supposed to be a $329 MSRP card with maybe the board partner cards up in the 400s. You're still looking at double the MSRP. Yes, I'm not saying that graphics card prices have come all the way down yet. What I'm saying is that there is movement in the right direction. If we track this every month before this, we would have seen that this price was going up. It was going up and up and up but now these prices are beginning to come down. Now, they're just starting on that hill to, to lean down, but why is that? Well, it's a really simple reason, and it has to do with this little thing we call Ethereum. And in particular, we see that the price of Ethereum and the difficulty to mine it, so the overall profitability of Ethereum mining on a GPU has absolutely plummeted. If we take a look at this thing, we can see that back in 2017, the, the difficulty got to about 3,000 terahash and then it plummeted and that was the first big drop. That was 2017. We saw something similar in 2018. It got to about 3,500. And then this year, you can see this steep incline. Now, as it goes up, it actually gets harder and harder to mine Ethereum. The reason for this is so that Ethereum just doesn't flood and, and it, it's, not, it's not like printing super amounts of money, right? Um, and it would completely devalue the currency instantly. So they've built in a difficulty curve to it. There's also something else called the difficulty bomb. We're not gonna get into that. Uh, you can look it up uh, separately. But as you can see, it's at 8,000 right now. It's more than double what it has ever been in any of the previous cryptocurrency booms. And the impact that that is having right now, coupled with the fact that Ethereum prices 
are actually going down. Now, right now you might look at it and say $2,600, that's not too bad, and it's not. In terms of Ethereum overall, $2,600, it's certainly about what it was a month ago, and it's certainly a lot more than it was earlier this year. But as you can see, it spiked all the way up to just about 4,000, and now it's coming, it's kind of ping-ponging in the mid-2000s. Went, went all the way down to just below 2000. Now it's kind of ping-ponging around 24, 2300, up to 26, 2700. And it seems to be stable there. So we've got two things going on. One is that the price of Ethereum has finally stopped skyrocketing. The other thing is the difficulty has massively increased even within the last month. So the overall profitability, if you were just to go to what to, like what to mine, which is a really popular uh, mining, and you looked at GPU profitability right now, you can see that something like an NVIDIA uh, GTX 3090 is only netting you $6.81 a day. $6.81 a day. Whereas before, you were making quite a bit on that RTX 3090. So overall, the overall difficulty has gone up. The profitability because of the price has come down. And as a result, the miners who were the ones buying these cards at these stupidly high prices because it was still making them money, even when they were paying stupidly high prices, they were still guaranteed that they were actually going to make money on that transaction where you and I as a gamer like that money, that money sunk and burned because we just play games with the dang thing, right? That Those economics are no longer in play. They have fallen apart. That is why you're going to start to see the prices on the secondary market shift down. And I think in some respects, you're going to see some of the scalping begin to reduce as well. All right, let me throw one little caveat in here. This is something that could throw a big wrench into the, our plans of GPU awesomeness at better prices. And that is a currency called Ergo. And you'll see it right here on the screen, E-R-G. And you're like, what the heck is Ergo? I barely heard of Ethereum. I haven't heard of Ergo. Yeah, nobody's heard of Ergo. It's kind of coming out of nowhere. And as the profitability for Ethereum has decreased, Ergo has come up to the point where right now they, at least in the filming of this video, they are approximately equal on RTX cards. So if we look at the RTX 3090 here, we can see a $6.80 projected profit on Ethereum and a $6.80 projected profit, uh, that's per day, on Ergo. So that may slow some things down. Now we'll, we'll have to see where Ergo goes. You know, it's, it's, it's increased in value, it's GPU mineable. We'll keep our eye on it, but I believe right now that there have been enough fundamental shifts in the cryptocurrency market and the profitability of it to start seeing some of the GPU prices come down. So what is the other thing that's really driving a better graphics card market? Well, that is actually supply is going up. So on the one hand, demand is going down, the insane demand from cryptocurrency miners who have no limit to the amount of GPUs that they will consume because again, these things produce money for them. That's going down and at the same time, supply is going up. A report that just came out as of the filming of this video, the discrete PC market has gone up quite a bit. Overall GPU sales are up 39%, but a lot of those are integrated and we know because of stay at home, you know, everyone's buying a Chromebook and things like that for their kids to go to school. So yes, those GPUs are going up, but discrete graphics cards, the things that you put in your PC to play a game, those are going up as well. And if we take a look at the chart, we can see that they shipped 11.77 million units in the first quarter. Now, if you look at the qu first quarter last year, they shipped 9.5 million. That's quite a bit more. Um, so supply is coming up. Now we can see, oh my gosh, they shipped 16 million units, you know, back in 2017. Yeah, a lot of those were to crypto miners in that time. And of course, as we know, then there was a big crypto crash and then there was a big graphics card crash because a lot of the miners then flooded the market with their graphics cards and Nvidia and AMD both had very challenged times in 2017 and 2018 as a result. They're not going to reproduce that. So I don't believe that they are going to, we're ever going to see these kinds of numbers unless the whole market segment grows. Um, we're not going to see this 
as a response to simply mining. But it is nice to know that the, they are ramping up production even in the face of silicon shortages that are affecting a lot of other industries, not just the graphics card industry. So we're seeing a lot more units come online and I would expect to see this number to continue to rise in the second quarter. We've already passed the second quarter, so we'll have to see those numbers in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter of this year. Okay, so there you have it. You've got increasing supply, you've got reduced demand. I expect to see those prices to come down to levels where it becomes no longer as profitable to scalp the cards. I think you'll see scalpers move on to other products. Remember, a lot of these scalpers, they just grab whatever product's hot and GPUs have been hot for too long right now. So then if you wanna get a graphics card right now, what is my recommendation? I still think that right now, if you wanna build a PC, I'd go ahead and buckle down and I would just buy something. There's still a lot of volatility in the market. However, I think there is a lot more credence now to wait. That's the first time I've said that in since they've launched these cards, geez, uh, maybe even in the fall. So I would say right now, if you want to wait, I think your position is probably a lot stronger than it was. But if you don't want to wait or you're like, ah, Jason, it could just go back up. This ergo thing could take off and then GPU prices could be. And if you want to get something right now, I'm going to recommend you go to Newegg Shuffle. I know I've been beating on this one. I got a lot of caveats about Newegg and Shuffle, especially with all these bundle deals that they keep throwing out. But the bundles have gotten less stupid. I will say that. They have the bundles at least make a little bit more sense. They're more power supplies. Less mo I was going to say less monitors, but there's a monitor right there. Ay, yeah, yeah. What are you doing to us, Newegg? Some more RAM sticks, things that you would actually need and maybe haven't bought just yet, um, other than like super high end motherboards that you may not want for just in like an RTX 3060 card. Uh, you know, like this one, for instance, uh, although this is a you know, 6700 XT with a Z590. Well, what if I want to build an AMD Ryzen rig? I mean, I don't want that board. So, they have gotten less stupid and they have been bringing back doing the individual cards themselves. Of course, I am superstitious or whatever, cautious about this. I just check everything and see what I get. I have won a couple of times. A couple of times I've decided not to buy it because it was something like I won one with a monitor and I decided I last thing I need is another monitor right now just to get a graphics card, especially since I still have one more graphics card that's going into build very soon. Um, but that's one of the ways I would look at grabbing a card right now is that. One of the other areas I'd look at getting a graphics card right now if you want one for a PC build is a channel like Fix It, Fix It, Fix It. This is a YouTube channel. You can also find these on Twitch. I'll just zoom out of this a little bit so you can see what's actually going on here. It's a stock checker and it's a bot and they post links in, um, in the chat when something comes up. I mean, you probably can't see the chats off the screen, but this is one way to get it. And of course, they also list the drop history, which is really nice. And these cards are still dropping. So Discord drops uh, as well. You can join a Discord channel. I know Fix It, Fix It, Fix It, which is the one I'm uh, looking at here. They also have a Discord drop. I'll leave links to these down in the description. Of course, another way, if you want to just get gaming right now and you've maybe given up on building, the other thing I will say to you is that there are two really good avenues. And the first one is to buy a pre-built gaming PC. Yes, I know there's some channels out there who have been trashing pre-built and some, some of those pre-built need to be trashed, okay? Some of them are trash. That's why I strongly recommend you always get something that's recommended. The big challenge with pre built is that they have been going out of stock so fast that by the time you found a review on one, it was already out of stock and it was gone. Um, that's why I did my best pre-built PC video uh, all the way back in January. I continue to update the, the links in the description of that video. I'll, I'll, I'll include a link to it down in the description and I'll put it up in the card as well so you can check it out. I Again, I update those links regularly, but at times it, th things were going in and out of stock so quickly it felt like almost crazy to try and keep that video up to date. And now I will tell you this, because GPUs are more available, you're seeing pre-built more available and there are some good ones out there. Yes, there are some crappy ones out there, but for instance, the Lenovo Legion Tower 5 here, this is a 3700X with a GTX 1660 Super. 
hard drive, solid state drive is a little smaller than I would like, but it does come with a pretty beefy cooler on it. And overall, I think it's a great value for $1,050. I wouldn't have said that a year, you know, a year ago, I would have said, oh, that's overpriced, but we're in a different market now. And if you just want to get something now, this is not too far off the mark. In fact, I think it's a great price. You couldn't, can't even get a 1660 Super for, you know, five or 600 bucks. So there you go. And of course, rounding this out, another way to go is consider a laptop. Hey, the world is starting to get back to a place where you might even travel once in a while. And wouldn't it be amazing to have an awesome gaming laptop? Gaming laptops have come a long way. I know they're not the most exciting things to people who want to build a desktop PC. And if that's you, hey, by all means, hold out for that uh, amazing desktop that's coming your way. But consider the laptops, something like an Acer Predator Helios 300 with an RTX 3060. I did a whole video on the best gaming laptops these are phenomenal values for $1,350. You get a whole computer, a whole computer with an RTX 3060. Yes, the performance is going to be less than a desktop because of the heat dissipation and power usage. Obviously, it's a laptop. It's not a big desktop. But they are fairly close. And the gaming performance you get out of these is pretty surprising. And it's come a long way, I'd say, in the last two years. So. I really think it's something to take a look at if you're predisposed to looking at it. If you're dead set on building a PC, hey, the name of the channel is PC Builder after all, I certainly get that. I just want to keep providing all the options I can to get you gaming, to get you having a good time so we can put this craziness behind us. So final thoughts. The overall graphics card market is beginning to recover. It's just beginning to recover, but it's moving in the right direction finally. That's it for this video. Tell me, what do you think down in the comments? How long have you been waiting to build your gaming PC? Of course, that's what this channel is all about, getting you the best price to performance. Remember to like the video, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll catch you on the next one.